Hi there, welcome back to Advanced English Lessons with Harry, where I try to help you to get a better understanding of the English language. This is an advanced English lesson, and in this one we're looking specifically at 20 advanced adjectives, okay? 20 advanced adjectives, adjectives in English that will help you to be a little bit more descriptive, particularly in your written format, but also if you're doing IELTS, if you're in your the speaking part or the written part of IELTS, really, really important to drop in a few good words, good adjectives, adverbs, whatever they might be. As you know, I strongly believe that one-to-one -one lessons are the best way in which you can improve your language skills. So let me introduce you to Preply. Preply has a one-to-one -one tutor platform where you can learn how to communicate in a language faster. Preply has thousands of tutors who are native in Spanish, English, Portuguese, German, and over 50 other languages. And with over 32,000 tutors to choose from, you can use their filters to narrow down the selection process to ensure that you get the tutor that meets your needs exactly. Preply connects you with real people expert tutors who can offer customized guidance and support to help you achieve your language learning goals. Plus, with the convenience of online lessons, you can take classes anytime and anywhere that suits your schedule. With Preply's 100% satisfaction guarantee, they will provide a replacement tutor if the first tutor that you select for some reason doesn't meet up to your expectations. So don't you think it's about time that you tried Preply? Make sure you click on the link in the description below to get your 50% reduction in the first lesson that you purchase with Preply.com. Thanks Preply for sponsoring this lesson. So in this particular lesson, we're going to focus on adjectives, 20 advanced adjectives. Okay, now a lot of these you might not know, and when you look at the list, you might not understand them at the first time that you look at them, then Please listen to it a couple of times. Take a few of them, not all of them, take a few of them, practice, okay? Look them up in the dictionary, practice them again, trying to see a situation when you can use them. And if you can only, and even just use a few of them in your speech, in an email, whatever, it'll help you to understand them much, much better and you have a much better chance of remembering them because just learning them by heart isn't going to work. You know, within 15, 20 minutes, they'll be gone. So you really have to practice, practice, and yes, more practice. Okay, so we've got 20, and I'm going to give you an explanation as to what it means, each one of them, and then I'll give you a, a couple of examples as to how you might be able to use them. Number one, articulate. Okay, articulate. Now, there is a verb to articulate, and when we're talking about the, the pronunciation, articulate is the adjective, a different pronunciation, different stress, okay? So articulate means the ability to express thoughts and ideas clearly and effectively, particularly when somebody is writing some essay or if they're giving a speech. So you have to be clear and effective. So you have to be articulate in the way you put it across so that pe people very, very clearly understand you. For example, the articulate lawyer presented a strong case persuading the jury with her convincing arguments and eloquent delivery. Yes, a good lawyer. Yes. So now we said the, I said here the articulate lawyer. You could also say the lawyer presented her case with articulate words or articulate delivery. So you can use articulate in many different ways. But here in my example, it's the articulate lawyer, meaning someone who is very, very clear. And then in the second example, we can talk about a journalist. So the articulate journalist wrote a powerful article shedding light on important issues and sparking meaningful 
conversations and debates. So a very articulate article by the journalist. Okay, so we could say the articulate journalist or an articulate article by the journalist. So an article that was very, very clear and clearly set out exactly what he was talking about, whether he was protesting against some building regulations or some corruption in the government. His arguments were very clear, very articulate, and this sparked a lot of debate and discussions around the country. Number two, astute. Astute. Okay, now astute means the ability to understand and analyze situations quickly and accurately. Okay, so when somebody is astute, it doesn't take them long to understand what somebody's trying to tell them, and they're able to sum up the situation very quickly and very accurately. Okay, now an example. The Astute businessman was able to predict market trends and make strategic decisions leading to great success in his business. Okay, so the articulate, sorry, the astute businessman was able to predict market trends and make strategic decisions that led to great success in his business. The astute businessman. So he made decisions that were really, really effective, okay, but also that helped his business to develop. Okay, so astute. And a second example, we could talk about politicians, and politicians can often be astute. So the astute politician was able to navigate complex political situations and make wise choices for the benefit of his or her constituents. Okay, so the the, uh, constituents in their constituency, they need good leadership from their politicians. So this particular politician was particularly astute. Okay, so he's able to make wise, clever decisions that were for the benefit of everybody who lived in his constituency. Don't forget to click on the link in the description below to get your 50% reduction in the first lesson that you purchase with Preply.com. Number three, diligent. Okay, so this is another strong adjective, diligent. Diligent refers to somebody who is hardworking, who is conscientious and thorough in everything they do. Diligent. The diligent student studied for hours every day putting in great effort to achieve top grades in all of her classes. Okay, so the diligent student. Now, if you wanted to use it as an adverb, you could say the student studied diligently for hours. So you could turn it around and present it as an adverb. So very easy to change verbs, sorry, adjectives to adverbs by adding L-Y. So diligent becomes diligently. So the student studied diligently Adjective, add ly, becomes the adverb. Here we're talking about adjectives, so go back to diligent. The diligent student studied for hours each day, putting in the effort to achieve top marks in her exams. Or the diligent employee worked tirelessly to meet deadlines and exceed expectations, earning praise and recognition from his bosses. Okay, so the employee was very diligent in his work. He worked tirelessly to meet those deadlines. Yeah, So he worked day in, day out, not caring really whether he had to work overtime or not. He just wanted to make sure that the work got done. So he was very diligent, very dedicated in his work. Number four, eminent. Eminent. When somebody is eminent, a person is eminent, we refer to them that it's somebody who is highly respected in the position they hold, the work they do, and they are greatly admired by everybody. So highly respected and admired, often because of great achievements that they, they have achieved or that they have done. Okay, so exa- for example, the eminent scientist made groundbreaking discoveries that revolutionized the field of medicine, earning her numerous accolades and awards. So the work by this particular scientist, her work was recognized by everybody and she was soon seen as a real 
eminent scientist in her field of cancer research or whatever it was that she was studying. She'd made some breakthrough and groundbreaking discoveries in relation to drug treatment or some other way to lessen the impact of these particular uh, diseases. Okay, so an eminent scientist or an eminent politician, if there's such a thing, who's greatly respected, somebody who's been a politician for many, many decades, they could also be described as eminent. In my second example, we talk about an eminent artist, so an artist who is well respected by other members of the artistic world, but also by the general public. So the eminent artist created masterpieces that inspired generations, leaving a lasting legacy in the world of art. Okay, so the eminent artist who created sculptures or paintings that were really beautiful, amazing technique, and these were certainly uh, revered by everybody who, who has uh, seen them. Number five, impartial. So we're talking, let's say, remember we're talking about um, adjectives here. So impartial. Impartial means somebody that has an unbiased and fair view of whatever the situation is, an unbiased and fair view of other people, an unbiased and fair view of the situation, an unbiased fair view of the competition. Okay. So for example, Judges in competitions, they also have to and always have to be impartial. The impartial judge considered all the evidence and made a just and fair decision upholding the principles of justice and equality. Okay, so the impartial judge in the, in the jury considered all the evidence and made a just decision upholding the principles of justice and equality. Or the impartial Partial journalist re reported on the news objectively. So if he's impartial, he's going to be objective. So he reported on the news objectively, presenting all sides of the story and avoiding sensationalism or bias. Okay, so he presented the facts as they were. He didn't color it in any way. He didn't lean in, f in favor of one or the other. He gave an objective or unbiased or impartial view on the situation and allowed the reader to make up his own mind, which is a good sign of good journalism. Next word, number six, uh, innovative, innovative. Okay, so innovative is all about being creative, okay, creating something, uh, something usually that's original and it's some new ideas or new methods. So something that's innovative, for example, the electric car, the electric vehicle is innovative, not now, of course, it's been there for a few years, but when it was first introduced, it would have been seen as revolutionary and breaking the mold, so innovative. For example, the innovative entrepreneur invented a new product that solved a common problem, disrupting the market and attracting a large customer base. So when we first saw the introduction of the World Wide Web, the introduction of emails, the induction, introduction of mobile phones. These were, of course, innovative inventions, something that nobody had ever seen before. And, you know, there will be always new ideas coming to the market that people are not so sh sure about. And yet, you know, 10, 15, 20 years later, they're looked on as being highly innovative. Okay, so when something is innovative, it's creative, it's different, it's new, it's original, something that is quite groundbreaking. And then number seven, meticulous. Now get the pronunciation right here, meticulous. Again, just reminding you we're talking about adjectives. These are all adjectives, meticulous. And when something is meticulous, it's very carefully made and uh, with great precision. So extreme care and precision has gone into making something. It's meticulous and they have to pay close attention to the details. So a meticulous report leaves no stone unturned. Meticulous investigation means you've looked at every way and every idea and every angle to make sure that you're reporting correctly. So meticulous, you go into every little bit of detail. You don't leave anything out. Anything that you're suspicious of, you investigate meticulous. For example, the meticulous architect designed a building that was both functional and aesthetically pleasing to the eye, taking into account every detail and aspect of the structure and the landscape 
around it. Okay, so meticulous. The architect was meticulous in his planning, meticulous in his design, making sure that the building fitted in not only to the street, but the other buildings around it, and perhaps the history of that particular hit city. Okay, so the meticulous architect. The meticulous chef, so a cook or a chef, the meticulous chef prepared a dish, not just any dish, it was a meticulous dish prepared with great perfection and precision, with proper seasoning, and it was presented well and paying attention to every ingredient that he used, both in terms of the look and the flavour and the taste. Okay, so the meticulous chef, he, again, when he was presenting his dish perhaps on some TV program like Master Chef or presenting a meal for fit for a king went into great detail and meticulous detail to make sure that it represented what he wanted it to. Okay, so hopefully you're still with me. These are advanced adjectives and shown you different words, a lot of them that you might not have heard, how you can use them. As I said at the very beginning, make sure you try and practice a few of them. So we're on to number eight and number eight is resourceful. Yeah, When somebody is resourceful, it means they're able to find solutions to problems that other people may not be able to find solutions to. They can, they can use contacts they have, information they have, they always have a way around a problem. So they are resourceful. Example, the resourceful engineer solved a complex technical problem using unconventional methods and finding a unique solution to the problem. Okay, so he was resourceful. He put his thinking cap on, as we might say, and he thought about the problem from every angle and he came up with an appropriate and ingenious a solution to his particular problem. So he would be described as being extremely resourceful. And the second example, the resourceful traveler navigated the foreign country with ease using her language skills and cultural knowledge to overcome all obstacles. So traveling around South America or Asia where you may not have so much experience, but if you've done a lot of reading, you speak a couple of the languages, these particular skills will help you no end and will ensure that you have a good trip. So a very resourceful way in which you can get around particular problems. Often the problems are just one of communication. Number nine, resilient. Resilient. Okay, now somebody who is resilient is someone who is able to recover quickly from difficulties or from setbacks and adapt to any new circumstances that are put in their way. They are resilient. Okay, the resilient athlete bounced back from a, a series of injuries, working hard to regain his strength and eventually achieve his great success by winning a gold medal. So very resilient. Lots and lots of injuries time and time again, but he got back on the road to recovery, built up the leg or whichever part of the body that had been injured frequently and he achieved his ultimate goal by winning a medal in some European or perhaps world or even Olympic championships. So to be resilient. A second example, the resilient entrepreneur weathered the challenge of starting a new business, learning from previous failures and adapting to changing market conditions. So the resilient entrepreneur, this was not his first time to get into business and maybe on the back of a few previous failures, other people would have just given up. He didn't, he showed his resilience uh, and he proved that he was able to make a success of his business. So he was very, very resilient. Yeah, and the, with the T on the end of that adjective, resilient, the noun, showed great resilience. Number 10, versatile. So versatile is somebody who is flexible, is able to adapt to a variety of different situations or roles and capable of performing very, very many different tasks. So when you're versatile, which is a really great characteristic to have, you're very, very beneficial to the company you work for, the team you play for, whatever it might be. If you're versatile, you've got really great strengths that everybody will look for.
The versatile actor, for example, the versatile actor played a wide range of characters, demonstrating her ability to portray different emotions and personalities. So she wasn't just known as a, a comedian, she wasn't known just as a serious actor, she could do Shakespeare or she could act in theatre or on the small or the large screen, so extremely versatile. The versatile employee had a diverse set of skills and was able to contribute to many different projects and initiatives, making her a valuable asset to her company and in fact any company that would be lucky to have her. Okay, so a versatile employee, not only good in finance, in accounting, also good in marketing, IT, whatever it took, she had those particular abilities. So very, very versatile. Number 11 assertive. Okay, now this is a really strong adjective. When people are assertive, it usually means that they are very confident and self-assured and they're able to express their opinions and stick to those opinions even when people criticize them or don't agree with them. They can be very, very assertive. So they can be very clear and forceful in their defense of their particular opinion. The assertive leader was able to rally her team around her and make quick decisions even under the highest pressure. Okay, so no matter what the situation was, she was able to get her team uh, to believe and follow her to make them feel assured that what she was doing and the decisions she was making were going to be successful. So she was very assertive even in the face of criticism. And the second example, the assertive negotiator, so somebody negotiating, the assertive negotiator was able to get the best deal for his company, standing firm and confident in his position against all comers. So no matter what people threw at him, he had an answer. No matter what people put up, he could come up with a solution. So he was very assertive in his abilities and as a negotiator. So he was able to negotiate the best deal possible for his company. Number 12, compassionate, compassionate. Okay, when somebody is compassionate, they show great sympathy and empathy for other people, yeah? So, and particularly for other people's welfare. So they're not just in it for themselves, they're not just interested in how they do, but they're aware of those people around them and their particular situation. The compassionate nurse treated her patients with care and empathy, going above and beyond the cause to ensure their comfort and well-being. So the compassionate nurse are doing everything she possibly could to make the patients comfortable, to make their stay in hospital not enjoyable, but a way that they would recover more quickly and some great empathy and sympathy for their, their un, uh, unusual situation. Okay, so the compassionate nurse. Or the compassionate volunteer worker. So if you're, if you're volunteering in some of these NGOs, you have to have compassion, particularly if you're going to serve in some strange and exotic location. So the compassionate volunteer worked tirelessly to help those in need, dedicating her time and resources to various charitable causes. So she decided to dedicate part of her life to charitable causes. So she went to some parts of Africa and there she was able to volunteer to help dig wells, to help educate kids, to show them how to grow crops. So she showed great compassion, great empathy and sympathy for their particular plight. Okay, so the compassionate volunteer. Okay, now we're moving on to number 13 and number 13 is empathetic, okay? So this is when somebody has empathy, empathetic. And be very careful here because people often get the word confused. So it's empathetic, empathetic, okay? And being empathetic means that you are able to understand and share the feeling of others, okay? So you have empathy for them, yeah? Empathetic. And as an example, the empathetic counselor provided a safe and supportive space for her clients helping them to work through their emotional challenges. So it could have been a psychologist, psychiatrist. Here we're saying the empathetic counselor provided a safe and supportive space for her clients. Really, really important to show that empathy. 
The empathetic friend listened attentively and offered words of comfort and support to her grieving friend. Okay, so the friend showing empathy, the empathetic friend listened attentively and offered words of comfort and support to her grieving friend. So the friend had lost a parent or divorced or something like that. So she had to show and give a shoulder to lean on. She had to show great empathy for her friend. Number 14, number 14, persistent, persistent. You get the pronunciation, get that sound right, persistent. And being persistent means continuing to try to do something despite difficulties that get in your way. You just try and try and try until you succeed, to be persistent. The persistent athlete trained every day and finally won the championship after many years. Okay, so his persistency paid off. He tried and tried and tried. He trained and trained and trained. And that persistence, yeah, being persistent, that ability to be persistent meant that he turned it into success. The persistent student kept studying until she finally passed her exam. So maybe she failed once or twice, but she didn't give up. She was persistent. She continued. She learned from her previous failures and eventually she was a success. Persistent. Okay, so we are being very persistent here. We're continuing. We're coming to the end. We're on to number 15. So six more to go. Number 15, inquisitive. 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 So when you're inquisitive, you have a strong desire to learn or know more about something or how something works. When you have an inquisitive mind, often young people have inquisitive minds. Why? How does that work? What's that for? Why do you do that? Yes, yeah, so a very inquisitive mind, always asking questions. The child's inquisitive nature led him to ask lots of questions about the world around him. The the child's inquisitive mind led him to ask lots of questions about how the world worked. The inquisitive student always asked thought-provoking questions in class of his teacher. The inquisitive student always asked thought-provoking questions of his teacher to find out more information. Challenge, challenge, challenge. Number 16, conscientious. Again, be careful with the pronunciation. It's a bit of a mouthful. Conscientious. 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 And when somebody is conscientious, it means they are diligent, they are responsible, they are thorough, and they're very careful about their work. Okay, so the conscientious worker. Okay, conscientious, diligent, responsible, and thorough. So as an example, she is a conscientious student. She is a conscientious student who always submits her assignments on time and puts in a lot of effort. A conscientious student. So lots of S sounds. Uh, she is a conscientious student who always submits her assignments on time. The conscientious employee double checks his work to ensure there are no mistakes. The conscientious employee always checks his work twice or double checks it to make sure there are no mistakes. Conscientious, conscientious student and a conscientious employee. Okay, so difficult sounds, you have to be really, really careful. Even for people like me, we try to say it quickly, we can often get a little bit tongue-tied. Con she anxious, conscientious, con she anxious, conscientious. Okay, I'll give up there because I might get it wrong. Okay, anyway, that's number 16, conscientious. Number 17, arrogant. People who are arrogant. I hate arrogant people. So, arrogant is when you have an exaggerated sense of self importance or superiority. So, somebody walks around with their nose in the air, looking down the nose at other people, can be described as somewhat arrogant. He was so arrogant that he refused to listen to anyone else's opinion, believing that he was correct. 
Okay, oh, he was right. So he was so arrogant that he refused to listen to anyone else's opinions, even when he was wrong. She was often criticized for her arrogant behavior towards her colleagues. She was often criticized for her arrogant behavior or behaving arrogantly, if you want to put it in as an adverb, her arrogant behavior towards her colleagues. Number 18, a much nicer adjective, eloquent. And again, be careful with the pronunciation, eloquent, quint, eloquent, okay? And eloquent is all about being fluent, all about being persuasive in your way of speaking or writing, so you can be articulate, uh, eloquent is articulate, eloquent in your writing, eloquent in your pronunciation, eloquent in your speech. The eloquent politician or the politician delivered an eloquent and powerful speech, if you want to put it that way. The politician delivered a powerful and eloquent speech that moved the audience. The eloquent writer has a way with words that captivates readers. Okay, so if you're talking about a particular reader that you like to read any of the books that he or she has written, then you can say they write eloquently or her books are eloquent or they are full of eloquent phrases and vocabulary. Yeah? So you can use that word time and time again. And what it means is something fluent, beautiful, persuasive, very articulate. Okay, number 19, tenacious, tenacious, like a dog with a bone, tenacious. Yeah. And when you're tenacious, you have the ability to be persistent and not to give up easily. And that's the dog with the bone. If you get the dog until he gets and chews and holds it and pulls and pulls and pulls, that's a tenacious dog, like a little terrier. Okay. So as an example, the tenacious mountain climber refused to give up and he finally reached the summit. So after many attempts, many years, he finally reached the summit. He was tenacious in his desire to reach that summit. The tenacious job seeker applied for many, many uh, positions with different companies before finally getting the job of his dreams. Okay, so the tenacious job seeker or job hunter applied to many, many companies for many, many positions before finally getting the job of his or her dreams. And then finally, perseverant. We have the word perseverance as the Noun perseverant, okay? And just be careful again with that pronunci pronunciation, perseverant. Having the ability to persist, to be perseverant, to have the ability to persist and continue despite the difficulties. You never, never, ever give up. The perseverant athlete trained hard every day and eventually won the race. The perseverant athlete. The perseverant student studied hard for the exams and finally got straight A's. Okay, so again, perseverant, perseverance, perseverant, and be careful with that pronunciation. Okay, so there you have 20, 20 adjectives, 20 advanced adjectives. You won't remember them all. Try and practice a few of them. Pick and choose the ones that you like the sound of. Practice the pronunciation to make sure you get it very clear. Practice the use of them in sentences to see how you can use them. If you have any doubt, any problems, then come back to me and I'll give you some more examples. Okay, this is Harry thanking you. Hopefully you will come back and join us again for the next lesson.